Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. In this next episode, we have a, a good comedy western. The star is George Montgomery, and his co-stars are Alan Hale Jr., Gloria Talbot, and Karen Steele. This is a fantastic episode with a little bit of twists and turns. It's very enjoyable. It's part of an anthology series, and these anthology series would do all kinds of episodes. And of course, in the 1950s, they did lots of westerns. This one has been almost forgotten, almost lost, but we're very happy to bring it to you here on the Forsaken Westerns. Have an enjoyable time watching it, and we'll see you after the show. Telegram here for Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly? Well, I'll give it to him. Thanks. Mary. Mary, just read this. What is it? A telegram for Dan Kelly. You shouldn't. Lulu misses you. Helen cries for you. Martha desolate. Dorothy can't be consoled, and neither can I. Signed, Anne. Oh, my. You better give it to him. I will, as soon as I see Mr. Shelby. Just imagine having all those girls sighing for him. I don't blame them. Mary! Dozen Cuban pantos, all right. How's the bourbon holding up? Oh, better send five more cases. All right. A rock and rise, Mr. Shelby, please. Here's a telegram for you, Mr. Kelly. Oh, thank you. Rock and rye, is it, Nancy? Mm. How is Mr. Shelby's cold? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. He has everyone in the hotel waiting on him. What'll you be having, Dan? Sarsaparilla or lemonade? I'll just make it a short lemonade. How do you like that? A whiskey drummer that won't even be touching the stuff himself. Oh, now I do once in a while. Well, there you are, Nancy. Well, hi, Herb. Sorry, I didn't see you. Of course you didn't. You've been busy looking somewhere else. What are you doing in here? I'm getting a drink for Mr. Shelby. That's what I'm doing in here. Besides, it's perfectly all right for a girl to be in here if she's a dining room waitress. Sure, sure, honey. Just that I don't like you around where there's other men, that's all. Makes me mad. Especially when one starts looking at you. I can't stop people from looking. Besides, I like to be looked at. Name's Herb Loftus. Bad news Loftus, they call it. The railroad man. He's got a one-track mine, if you ask me. Frankly, I think it's a bit derailed. Well, I suppose you'll be pulling out tomorrow. Yeah, leaving the first thing in the morning. Where are you heading? Home this time. All the way to St. Louis. Liable to be a pretty hot trip this time of year. Oh, I won't mind that. Got a new baby daughter waiting for me at home. Your first daughter, you mean? First kid. <laughs> no, the eighth. Eighth? Four boys, four girls. Just got a wire from the girls in the family this morning. Well, you're a pretty young fellow to be having such a big family. Nothing like a big family. Nothing in the whole world like it. Only trouble is I don't get to see them very often. 
Oh, trouble's no job for a family man. Well, it can't last forever. Oh, maybe one of these days they'll give you an interest in the business. Oh, I already have an interest in the business. And it's rather amazing how it came about. How's that? Well, the boss called me in the office one day and he said, Kelly, either you take an interest in this business or get out. Well, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that, that was nice, all right. Well, I think I'll have an early dinner. Thank you very much for your order, Mr. O'Brien. If I don't see you before I leave in the morning, best of luck to you. Good luck to you and a pleasant journey. Thank you. Well, here you are again. Good evening. Good evening. May I suggest the roast pork? Well, you may indeed. Of course, it's nothing like you get in New York or Chicago, but it's tasty. Good. Perhaps a bottle of wine would help it. Wine? Oh, well, champagne, maybe. I imagine all you Easterners have champagne with every meal. Well, sometimes we skip it at breakfast. And uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll skip it tonight. This table Let's is just... mine, Nancy, and you know it. What are you doing here? Well, you know perfectly well what I'm doing here. This is my station. This is my station. Well, Miss Shelby no, assigned no. me to this table Monday, and don't tell me she didn't tell you. I'm telling you she didn't tell me, and she didn't tell me because she didn't tell you. Well, now, perhaps if this you This is to my call table, and I intend to wait on it. You do not do any waiting here. What is the meaning of this? Miss Shelby, you assigned me to this table, didn't you? This has always been my station. You know that I assigned this table to Mary on Monday, and I told you about it. Now, please go back to your own station, and enough of this foolishness. I'm sorry. Very well. Goodbye, Mr. Kelly. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. May I order my dinner now? Oh, of course you may. Roast pork now, if you please. Peach pie. Coffee. I'm sorry I can't bring you some hors d'oeuvres. Some what? Hors d'oeuvres. Well, don't you Easterners always have hors d'oeuvres? Oh, yes, yes. But this Easterner would like some time today to eat some roast pork, some peach pie, and drink some coffee. Now, I apologize if my taste seems somewhat ordinary, but then again, I I'm a pretty ordinary fellow. Honestly, I am. I don't believe that. Nevertheless, I should like some time today... Oh, right away. What was it again? Roast pork, peach pie, and coffee. I'm sorry, Miss Shelby. Would you please cancel my dinner for me? I'm quite suddenly extremely unhungry. I hope we didn't upset you. No, 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 not at all, Miss Shelby. It's just that... Well, I'll come back later. Thank you. 
Just what do you think you could get away with, dude? I've been watching you. You're after her. Is after whom? Don't try and confuse things with fancy talk. You're after her. Her is Nancy, and you is you. You were shining up to her in the bar. Then you got her to wait on you in the dining room, got her in trouble. Then you even had the nerve to stop her and ask her for a match here in the lobby. My dear fellow, you couldn't be more wrong. I ain't your dear fellow. I'm warning you, leave her alone. Don't speak to her again. All right. All right what? All right. All right what? All right, I won't speak to your girl again. Even if she's my waitress tomorrow morning. Oh, so you and her made plans for tomorrow too, huh? After she's being completely ridiculous. Is she or ain't she gonna be your waitress in the morning? She's not going to be my waitress. I'll not eat here. Uh, I'll eat somewhere else. How does that strike you? You're lying. Loftus, let me simplify this for you. All I'm trying to do is read a newspaper. I haven't talked to your girl. That is not really talked to her. That's a lie, because I saw you. My waitress, I spoke to her, but we didn't talk. There you go, getting sneaky again. You spoke to her, but you didn't talk to her. Now, please, Mr. Loftus, get out of here. Look, dude, you ain't crawling out of this one. You and me have a meeting at Knuckle Junction. Take your hands off of me. Now then, you said something about Knuckle Junction. I did. Lead the way. What, and let you get behind me? Well, I'm not going to walk out there arm in arm. Just what does that mean? I'm not going through that again. Have it your own way. Now, really, Lawfish, the fight hasn't started yet. Now, just where do we fight? Right here, dude. <laughs> Yeah, Loftus. You wore him out. Yes? You fought for me. Now, my dear Miss... Moffat. Martha, excuse me. Really, Miss Moffat, I uh, just what is it you want here? Now, why did you come? I've come to nurse you. I'm not the one who needs nursing, Miss Moffat. Bad news, Loftus is more in need of the Florence Nightingale oh, treatment. Now, but I don't care anything about him. Miss Moffat, you'd better leave now. This situation could very easily be misunderstood. Why? Why? I have a pretty girl like you in a man's Then room you and... do think I'm pretty. Yes, yes, beautiful. Now, good night, Miss... <laughs> Don't worry. I haven't run away. Well, start running. Now! About the fight. 
Well, I'm just fine. Not just fine, miss. Everybody's talking about how handy you are with your fist. Well, thank you very much. Miss... Anderson. Miss Anderson, you really shouldn't be here, you know. Oh, well, I, I thought you might be hungry. Well, that's, that's very thoughtful of you. Now, but... I'm sorry about what happened in the dining room. Well, let's just forget about it. There's no harm done. I hope not. Well, what's the meaning of this? Are you as handy with guns as you are at boxing? My boyfriend, Sundown Jones, he heard about how you flirted with me. Flirted with you? I flirted with you? Well, you smiled at me, didn't you? Yes, but... A and you spoke nicely to me, didn't you? Yes, of course, but you mean to... Well... I, I see. I flirted with you. Well, what about this Sundown Jones of yours? Or... He went home to buckle on his guns. I wanted you to have a chance. Oh, I hope you win. Hope I win? You mean to tell me they still fight with guns around here? Yes. Well, I won't. Just make sure you draw first. Draw, draw first. Now, my dear Miss... And even if you don't win, I'll always remember you. Well, that's very kind of you. I must say, now, my dear Miss Mary... Get the draw on us, Sheriff. Oh, will you cut it out? Stop acting ridiculous. I thought you said Nancy. He's likely been sweet-talking Mary, too. I've got you covered. Now, where is she? Where is who? Nancy Moffat. Well, now, how should I know? Now, don't lie to me. You were seen talking to her. She was here a minute or so ago. Wanted to know whether or not I was hurt. I assured her I wasn't. You never give me a chance. Want a return bout? Stretch me, Sheriff. Hope you're catching all this. Just what do you take us for? We may live in the back country. But we can always spot troublemakers like you. Oh, what have I done? I came into town on business. I finished that business. Now all I want is a night's sleep. What's wrong with that? Steady. This isn't even my gun. Miss Mary Anderson gave it to me. She said she had a very jealous boyfriend by the name of Sundown Jones or something. And now you're gunning for Sundown. See, what are you trying to do to our town? Wreck it? Maybe we all let him go after Sundown, Sheriff. I'll tend to this. Now, which one was you planning to take away with you? Which one what? Which one girl? Which child? Look, Sheriff, I'm a family man. I'm married. I've got eight children at home. Can you deny them two girls were here in the room with you? Can you or can't you? No, I can't. Look, Sheriff, sit down, will you? I think you've misunderstood something. I'll stand. Now, uh, how have I misunderstood? Sheriff, I'm a stranger in town. I'm from a different part of the country, from the city. I dress differently. All that might attract an impressionable girl. Forgot to say you're pretty, too. Oh, will you please shut up? Now, I don't know why those two girls were especially friendly to me. Now, you watch her language, mister. Just what do you mean? Everything I've said, you've twisted around. Both of you. I said the girls were friendly, and so they were. Nothing wrong with being friendly to a stranger, is there? Answer it. Yes, what is it? You said I was pretty, Mr. Kelly. How pretty? Well, kind of wraps it up, eh, sport? What do you got to say for yourself now, dude? Nothing. Guess we're just too slick for him, Sheriff. I've got those city fellas' number every time. Oh, what's the use of trying to fool you fellas? You've got me dead to rights. Ah, oh, you admitted that. Huh? You was sweet-talking them gals. There's no use trying to hide anything from you two. Nothing much gets past you two, does it? The gentlemen, the drinks are on me. Let's adjourn to the saloon. That is, before you lock me up. Oh, he won't try anything funny. He knows we got him licked. Let's go. I'll give this gun back to Mary, and I'll even leave Sundown Jones alone. Lead the way, gentlemen. After you. Yes, sir, I, I just can't get over the women in this town. Why, they led me on just like I was a schoolboy, and I fell for it. <laughs> They're probably laughing themselves silly at my being so simple. O'Brien, bourbon all around. And lemonade for you? 
Are you talking to me? Well, I, I, I thought that... You heard me. Bourbon. And big glasses. Ain't you just a little ashamed of yourself? Honestly, ain't you a little ashamed? Well, now, maybe I guess I am a bit of that. <laughs> you know, I wasn't just satisfied to let one girl make a fool out of me. I, I had to start flirting around with that, that little blonde girl. <laughs> Yeah, there I was, a big city man, sitting in his hotel room at sundown, waiting for two girls. Sundown? Yeah, sundown. It's been nice knowing you. You can have that drink some other time. I just remembered it. Now, wait a minute. You're the sheriff. You're supposed to do something about this. If I'm here, I have to do something about it. But I can't do anything about it if I ain't here. Sundown. Howdy, stranger. Care for a hand of poker first? Don't mind if I do. Drink? Yep. What'll it be? Lemonade. O'Brien? Lemonade and coffee. Yes, sir. Showdown poker. You're about 6 1, I send down. 6 2. I always like to make sure I order the box the right size. Always conduct services. Why, uh, just what denomination are you, Sundown? That's my business. I don't like to make a little speech at the cemetery. Like where you came from, where you were born, where you're heading. Now, there's no use bothering you with those details. I can always get them from Mary later. You shouldn't have done what you did. I done what I did, and now I'm going to do what I got to do, Sundown. Eight children. I mean, four little girls. Four queens, that is. Yeah, four queens. Here, tell you, uh, mighty handy at fist fighting. Learn to shoot first. Well, there's no use prolonging this any longer, sundown. You ride out to the end of town and start walking back. I'll meet you halfway. And no hiding. We'll both walk down in the middle of the street. Now get going. I'll see you at the burial grounds. to the edge of town and then just kept right on a going.
that was a little bit different character for George Montgomery to play. He's usually a really tough, fast gun, but he's good at comedy too. We're very glad to bring this to you, to keep it from being lost, to keep it from being forgotten. Thank you for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. My name is Bob Terry. Have a great day.